We're going to do a little meditation, a little time, a little chance to let go of the day and uh, say goodbye to this Raj because there will be another one returning. I guarantee you that. Mm-hmm. Yes, it has all of the earmarks of that. <laughs> so I'm curious to see who's going to show up as me next. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively, actively, actively resist. Some of the ideas you hear tonight, you may actively resist. Actively, 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 actively resist. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe, and others may seem to be quite startling. Others may seem to be quite startling. You are not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. You are not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. Their use will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Their use will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Beloved and innocent friends, feel and understand my delight as I seek to look upon the world in which you abide and allow myself to receive the guidance of my creator to me. I can best create communication devices that can touch as many hearts and minds as possible. In reality, as you have fallen under the spell of the world, you have fallen under the spell of the world, you have fallen under the spell of the world that you have created. You're living in the world that you have created for no other reason than that you wanted to. You have come to perceive the body. You have come to perceive the body in a certain way. First of all, you think that your body is quite solid when in fact your body is not solid. You think that the body separates you from the other people here. Since as your scientists well know, no two solid objects can occupy the same point of space and time. They are quite right about that. In reality, your body does not contain you. Rather, you contain the body. Your mind is vast. Your mind is eternal. Your mind is unlimited. Your mind is is very vast. Your mind is eternal. 
and your mind is unlimited. If you think a loving thought, if you think a loving thought, 10,000 miles away, someone may suddenly think of you and feel good in their body and not even know why and just let it go by. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If you think a loving thought, someone may suddenly be thinking of you because of that and feel good in their body and not even know why and just let it go by. Why? Because the belief system that that person must be doing that inside themselves and they think it has no connection to you. They think that the good feeling just came from them inside themselves and they don't know that they are part of the one mind. Mm. So that when any one of us experiences joy, that joy is available to all of us. In reality, thought is the substance of all things. Thought is an impulse. of pure energy. Thought is more subtle than anything in the physical domain. Thought travels faster than the speed of light. In fact, light is actually a physical occurrence that emerges long after the birthing of the dream of separation. So while a light year can seem to be quite a vast thing in your world of physics, rest assured that thought travels instantaneously. Thought travels instantaneously. In fact, thought is immediately present everywhere. As you are a conscious mind, you have a body and a mind living in the ocean of the pure Christ or love mind. You literally receive the impressions. You literally receive the impressions of all thought that's being thought anywhere. The thought, any thought, comes into your auric field and your auric field is really nothing more than a little gap that seems to separate one wave of us from the other wave of us. But in fact, we are joined to each other. You are more than a body. Your mind is vast and unlimited. You are more than a body. Your mind is vast and unlimited. And that is the deeper essence of your identity and my existence. You are in perfect communication with all forms of life at all times. You are in perfect communication with all forms of life 
at all times. You need only withdraw your attention. Just withdraw your attention. Just withdraw your attention from your perception, from your perception, from your perception. Withdraw your attention from the perception of your body to access communication with anyone at any time. You love yourself, 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 you love yourself. You love yourself, you love yourself, you love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love Love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love, love yourself, 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 love yourself. Allow yourself to be loved. Allow yourself to be loved. Allow yourself to be loved. Allow yourself to be truly loved. Allow yourself to be truly loved. Allow yourself to be truly loved. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Allow yourself to be truly, 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 truly loved. Love yourself. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Love yourself. This is a learning device. Where am I? What am I? A learning device. I'm not a learning device. I'm the learner. <laughs> we identify with the alert with the learning device, and then we lose our ability to receive all the incredible unlimited communication and, the, and guidance that we could receive. Because the purpose of the body is to relay a message to you. Mm -hmm to let you know what's happening. It's our radar. But if I identify with it, then who is it going to relay its message to? So it's like, you know, you're going to use a hammer, and you think you're the hammer. Well, what's the purpose of the hammer at that point? So we must begin to recognize that we are more than physical bodies at some point of our spiritual evolution in order to have the happiness that we say we want to have. We have to begin to get a new idea of who we are. Mm -hmm. And the section I'm going to be on tonight is in the way of knowing. It's on page 325, in the way of knowing. And it's the section called, You Decide Which Thoughts Will Influence Your Life. You decide which one of your thoughts are going to influence you. And I'm going to read through it as we normally do, and then I'm going to throw it open for us questions and discussion for a certain period of time, and then we're going to go through it, some more of it, and we'll see how much we can hear. And remember that if you tell yourself you have to believe what I'm <coughs> saying, it will hinder your ability to hear what I'm saying. So it's important to remember you don't have to believe it in order to let yourself hear it. So, here we go. All fields of thought then, in a sense, wash up to the shoreline of your being. 
And then you elect what influences will enter into the sphere of your being. Thoughts are showing up right now. You determine which thought is going to enter your sphere of influence. Some thoughts will pass through. Some you will begin to identify with. So I've been told that I'm stupid. I've been told I'm not enough. I was told as a child that I wasn't loved, that something was wrong with me. And so that thought began to influence and enter into my sphere. And so now when someone judges or criticizes me in any way, then I don't let those thoughts pass through. I identify with them. And then if someone says, you're powerful, you're beautiful, you deserve to be loved, and you're an infinite being, and you are totally innocent, mm -hmm. I let that pass through. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's not a reflection of the thoughts that I've allowed to influence me. Mm -hmm. Are you with me on this? Mm -hmm. So you must understand that, or not, that, <laughs> that we are always choosing the thoughts that we're going to allow to influence us. That it, does, it doesn't just happen that you feel the way you feel about anything. Mm -hmm. It's what we're being told right here. <clears throat> These thoughts enter your sphere and you identify with some of them and you let some of them pass through as not being true or relevant to you. And in most cases, people let the loving, powerful, beautiful, acknowledging thoughts pass through. And then every judgment, every criticism, they hook onto that one and let it influence them. So you then take these thoughts as your thoughts. So the ones I let the thought influence me, I will be tempted to say, this is my thought about me. Then it says, you will form an agreement with the nature of that thought, which means you're going to value that thought, and then you're going to create, this is the, the deep part, he says, then you're going to create experiences that flow from what? Your agreement your evaluation. That's a very important point. <laughs> Unless I go into agreement with the thought, the thought can't create that experience for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to have the experiences that anyone around me are choosing to have if I don't go into agreement with that thought. So for virtually all beings born within the human sphere, one such agreement is I am just a body, and therefore I am separate from all others. So here's a thought that I've allowed to influence me, that I've gone into agreement with, and now I'm creating experiences that reflect I am a body and I am separate from you. So the reason why I see myself as separate from you, according to this, and the reason why you see everybody in the room separate from you is because you are agreeing with the nature of that thought and therefore creating experiences that flow from that agreement that validate that thought. Okay, so it's merely an agreement, which is a decision to create experience. So an agreement is a decision that I am going to create this experience. So I'm going to go into agreement with the idea that I deserve abundance. I'm going to go into agreement with the idea that I need, I deserve to be free, and I deserve to be happy, and I deserve to be loved, and I deserve to know my innocence. I'm going to start going into agreement with the thoughts that I want to create the experience I'd like to have. So you are equally free to say within yourself, I am more than a body. That's now, this statement is one of the statements that bring up the most resistance in many years of teaching, that idea that you are not a body, because sometimes people think that means that that's putting down the body, or saying the body isn't okay, or that it doesn't serve a purpose, or, um, th or that um, it's not valuable. And what I said was, you are not a body, which is the same as saying you are not an iPod. Mm -hmm. You are not a remote control. You are not a book. You are not a microphone. You are not a body. Now, do I have an iPod? Yes. Do I have a mic? Do I have a remote control? Yes. Do I have a book? Yes. Do I have a body? Yes. Get it? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now if I identify with being an iPod, I'd have a rough life, <laughs> right? Because nothing about my nature corresponds with an iPod, right? So that's the problem with thinking that you're a body. When you think you are a body, it's the same as thinking you are an iPad. You identify with something that's not really you, and so you struggle. You have sadness and joy and pain. Just like if I was trying to feed myself thinking I was an iPod, I'd have a hard time. So we struggle and go through pain because of our misperception of what we are. So you are an infinite mind that's vast and unlimited. Now, if that's not what you've been telling yourself, you will let that thought flow through without allowing it to influence you or go into agreement with it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to have to remind myself that I'm more than a body and that I'm a mind and that I am vast and unlimited and go in, into agreement with that thought and then I start to create experiences that validate my vastness and my unlimitedness. Mm -hmm. And that is the deeper essence of my identity and my existence. <coughs> so then it goes on. So, so, this, so what we're hearing right now are thoughts that give us another kind of experience. And, and here are the thoughts. I am more than a body. My mind is vast and unlimited. And that is the deeper essence of my identity and my existence. I am in perfect communication with all forms of life at all times. I am in perfect communication with all forms of life at all times. I need only withdraw my attention. I need only withdraw my attention from my perception of my body to access communication with anyone at any time. I need to take my attention off your body in order to have communication with you any time. And since my attention is always on the body, then that explains why I'm not in communication with everybody all the time. And that's why we're not in communication with each other all the time. Because we all think we are bodies and we focus on each other's body. Several hundred times a day. <laughs> Depending on what part of town you're in and what you're doing. See, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing answers to things that I've wondered about, but they're answers that are so radically different from anything I've been taught and anything I've told myself that I don't hear it. Why don't I hear it? Because I have not had these kind of thoughts come up to the shoreline of my being, and I have not been taught to go in agreement with these kind of thoughts. So when someone says them to me, it doesn't really mean anything because there's nothing in me to hook on to it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get a new perception of yourself, a powerful perception of yourself, a loving perception of yourself, you have to go into agreement with thoughts that don't mean anything to you at first. Yeah. Because if you tell yourself you, can, you can't say these things until you really believe it, well then you're not allowing yourself to introduce the thought to your vast and unlimited mind so that it can create the experiences of un unlimitedness that you want to experience. Mm -hmm. So let go of this belief that you have to be excited and believe it when someone says you deserve love. They're introducing a thought that you can allow to influence you and go into agreement with so you can start creating experiences that are in alignment with that thought. But if I believe I'm not worth anything, would I grab hold to that thought and go into agreement with that thought? No. That's why sometimes it's very difficult to reach people who don't love themselves or who are very insecure because it sounds like what you're saying to them is preposterous. Mm -hmm. And so they think that they, it couldn't possibly be true, so they never go into agreement with it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, do not create new experiences for themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you broke as a dog, right, and you have allowed yourself to go into agreement with that thought because that was a thought that was introduced to you for a long time and even when you were a child, then to get past that lack, I have to start going into agreement with the thoughts of abundance that are my natural state. So I have to say I am abundant and remember I am abundant even if I don't believe it because 
do you know that just because you don't believe something doesn't mean it's not true? <laughs> See, we act like it's not true unless we believe it. And some things are true even if you don't believe it. I'm Earl, even if you don't believe it. You are vast and unlimited and powerful and loved and connected and innocent, even if you don't believe it. A smart person goes, all right, I know I don't believe it. I know I want to go into agreement with it. So priority one is I'm going to tell myself this and hear this as much as I possibly can. I'm going to form relationships with that remind me of this as much as I possibly can, which means for a while, there's just some people I'm not going to see and I'm not going to talk to for a while. They may be family, they may be relatives, they may even be old friends. But I'm in the pro but if they want to support continually the old thought system that I no longer want to go in agreement with because I no longer want those experiences created in my life, then I'm trying to build this thought into a very strong thought. And so for a while, I might need to separate myself from those parts of myself that still think the way I have thought long enough to become strong in the new thought, so strong in it that I can be around anyone and not allow myself to be influenced by their attitude no matter what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. Then me and my friends can hang out again who still want to choose to still create experiences based on lack and fear. But usually, they drop you. So that's not usually even an option. <clears throat> People who are drama-filled, don't love themselves, have a tendency to be repelled by people who are being positive and loving. Because first of all, they don't believe them. And they think they're suspicious, and they think they're somehow deceiving them. So I once said in A Course in Miracles, you have never forgotten the body even for a moment. And yet, a moment is all it takes to realize that you're not a body. All it takes is a moment to realize that you're not a body. And I did not mean by this that you should deny your body. Nobody's saying deny your body, but rather that you be willing to surrender your perception of what the body is. And what does that mean? That you start to tell yourself that your body is not a device that separates you from anybody at all. My body looks like it's separating me from you, but the truth is my body is not separating you from me at all. The only thing that appears to separate us is the way we think. Mm. Uh, this is a deep class. This book in the Course in Miracles is deep. I know it's not for the faint of heart, and mm -hmm. I know that I'm all like I always say. I'm always shocked to see who shows up. I'm always <laughs> pleased to see who Spirit sent to hear whatever's being said tonight, because this is not a class on per se how I can pay my credit card. <laughs> it's not a class on how can I find my soulmate. It's not a class on how can I lose ten pounds. You know, but within the recognition of the truth. What I found out is all those types of concerns get taken care of any friggin' way. Almost like, you know, like it's thrown in or something. <laughs> it's really weird. It's like the person who's just focused on the money actually is going to work harder to achieve it than the person that's trying to understand that it's their thought that's creating their experience and they are trying to have new <coughs> thoughts, which is easier. So I'm happy that I found the truth that works for me. Uh, this isn't the only way. That's great too, because that saves a lot of time. I'm glad that there's a zillion paths to truth that speeds the thing up. Imagine how long it would take if we had to convince everybody to believe the same form of the truth in order for us to awaken. It would never happen. I'm glad that you can find it no matter what you're into, provided you sincerely want it. You know, so. Uh, now, why is this so? Now, the Course is going to say, this is what happened before you became a body in the world. Okay, this is, this is why I said you don't have to believe it. But here's a story, okay? Uh, sounds more credible than a stork, <laughs> is what I heard when I was younger. Okay. So, you once decided to dream the impossible dream as a child of God, an infinite spirit. 
the dream of separation. Now, we're having the dream of being separate, and the body is the result of that thought. Your body is the, is the attempt to create something that succeeds in separating you from the mind of God. The body is my attempt to succeed at thinking I've separated myself from everything. My body, my body is an attempt to create something that succeeds in making me think that I am separate and different from you. This body is my attempt to believe I'm separate and different from you. And it looks like it, doesn't it? So we've been pretty good at this attempt. <laughs> uh, but you've never succeeded in being separate from anybody. For in the moment that that began to emerge, your higher self called the Holy Spirit already translated it into something that is not a separation device, but a communication device. You failed. <laughs> Spirit didn't fail. You failed. Now what, is it, what does that mean? Well, the minute that we come up with anything to make us think that we are separate and afraid, the part of, the part of us that loves us uses the same thing that we're trying to use to make us feel separate and afraid as a communication device that takes us back into the realm of love. So I, so I was using my body to make me think I'm separate from you and I'm different from you, but if you notice right now, I'm using my body as a communication device to remind you and me that we are all part of the mind of love, mm -hmm. that we're all joined, and that we're all one. So I'm using a body that was originally created to make me be separate from you to now communicate I love you and I'm with you and I'm joined with you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to get rid of my body. All I needed to do was use it in a new way. So there's no sacrifice on this path. There's no antibody path. <laughs> you know, there's a whole new meaning of antibody. <laughs> okay, this is not an antibody. <laughs> okay, or an uncle body. <laughs> Since I'm black, I need to put a little voodoo on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 oh my God. <laughs> this is deep, isn't it? Yeah. But it yes, totally it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, that's what's really scary, isn't it? <laughs> See, we're perfectly capable of understanding sanity. We just never hear any. So when we do, we go, ooh, I didn't know my mind was capable of hearing something that made sense. Mm -hmm. Because I've been straining for so many years to make things make sense that don't make no sense. <laughs> and so that's tiresome. You know, how many of you say that? You look at the situations in the world that we've created and the things that are going on, and you go, this just doesn't make any sense. Yes. <laughs> you know, and you're right. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. And the Course in Miracles says, stop trying to understand it. So you can't understand. He says, if you try to understand insanity, he says, then you will appreciate it. And then he says, if you appreciate it, you'll you draw it to you. So if I can appreciate the insanity of the world, then I'm just going to draw more of the insanity of the world to me. It's better, it's better for me to say, I don't understand any of this. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And I'm not going to try to make it make sense. What makes sense is love. So, I'm willing to do it. So this means that the body itself is constantly, if you sign the contact list, then I send you a link in the e an email that allows you to watch the video and hear what and see what we're doing again. On my website, I have hundreds of videos of my classes and on YouTube because it's the repetition that makes the difference. So um, you might consider allowing yourself to receive the links so that you can hear the new thoughts that you want to influence you to create new experiences that you say you want to create. Because in the meantime, you're going to hear radio, TV, newspaper, and people you know. <laughs> so you're going to be hearing something a lot different from any of this. So if you're not proactive about hearing something new, then we don't get into the new perception. Mm. So I want to make sure that I heard the new perception. So I started to teach. Mm -hmm. Because teaching guarantees that at least twice a week I'm going to mm -hmm. hear these thoughts. 
you know, because I got pretty much perfect attendance to all my classes. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to talk. Even though there was a couple I was missing, but even though I was there. But <laughs> so you teach best what you most need to learn, and you can't forget what you reminded someone else about, and you always answer people and respond to whatever people say to you in terms of what you want. Mm -hmm. And that's how you turn it all around because they're going to only hear what they want to hear out of what you're saying anyway. Mm -hmm. So you just as well say what you want to hear, because they're not hearing you no way. <laughs> Are you clear about that? Nobody's hearing you. Mm -hmm. They're just hearing themselves. Okay. So you say back to them what you want to remember. So if I want loving thoughts, I'm going to say them because I'm guaranteed to hear it. And what? That's, I'm going into agreement with it. And what? Yeah. It's going to create experiences that correspond with it. Because the other person is going to hear their interpretation of what I'm saying and not really what I'm saying anyway. Nobody's hearing you directly. No one's hearing you directly. No one's hearing you directly. No one's hearing you directly. That's how we know telepathy works. Or we wouldn't be able to relate to each other at all. And the reason why we're getting closer and closer to telepathy and being able to just communicate with each other just through thought, which is the most natural way to do it since we're just one man, is cell phones the internet. All those things are out of manifestations of the inner transformation that's going on within us and within our own mind and consciousness. We are more, we're able to be, you know, I'll be in Spain tomorrow, but I could instantly communicate with anybody here that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Which means I'm not really separate if you can communicate with me. Mm -hmm. I only seem separate if you think I'm a body. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, So we are beginning to join minds and technology is reflecting the change of our own consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's why we can instantly communicate with each other. I mm -hmm. remember when it wasn't any cell phones. And now when I look back, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what we did with no cell phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it really, it's a trip. It was a trip. I, yes. I remember when I was a kid, we had what you, what you call the party line. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and a party oh, line, yeah. and a party line was everybody using yeah. the same friggin' line. So you pick up to make a call, and you be hearing your neighbor down the street yeah. talking on the phone. And you have to wait till they get through talking before you can make a phone call. <laughs> That's, you know what I'm saying? That's deep, isn't it? Yeah. Just think about that. Think about how upset you'd be if every time you get ready to make a call, you had to wait for everybody else to get through that was talking. All right? But I remember that. As a matter of fact, our house caught on fire, and it was burning down, and my mother was running through the house carrying me and my little sister. I was like six years old, seven years old. And it was traumatic seeing your rocking horse go up in flames. Uh, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> but it happened to me. You know? And she was trying to call the fire department, and somebody was on the phone. And they wouldn't get off the phone. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So what I'm saying is there was more separation than there is now. You know, now we can have instant response. We are evolving faster than our spiritual awareness is. Technology is yeah. evolving faster than our capacity to love is. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's, that's, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I knew it was all in divine order, it could be pretty scary. <laughs> but thank God, love is what's behind everything, and there's an infinite intelligence that's smarter than us <laughs> that's behind wow. everything. That's how I keep from losing my mind. Mm -hmm. mm. So, any questions before I go to the next part? This was even deeper. Okay. I don't exactly know what I'm asking, but it made me think of how everybody's all up in arms about social media and how it's bad and, and people are being distanced from each other because of it. And what you're explaining, it's, it's the opposite of that. So it's really all a matter of our perception. perception. Yeah. 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 How could it be? How could it be? I'm less in communication when I'm more in communication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about how stupid that is to say we are less in communication. No, we are less in physical interaction. Mm -hmm. But that's even better mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where we make our, all our mistakes. Primarily, is in our physical interactions with each other. It's good that we can't get to each other's body as fast as we want to. <laughs> <laughs> 
you might have a chance to think about it beforehand. Or just at the very least, use your cell phone to have a background check. <laughs> Don't tell me we're not going to save for experience. You can, you can hit that person up right there. Let me see. What's up with them? They couldn't do that 30 years ago. Yeah. But you let your mind tell you that things are worse. They're not. We're just still being influenced by old thoughts that are no longer true about what's really going on. And so we're missing it. Like people who are proud that they have no email and that they're, they don't have any internet and they don't have any access to it. The first thing that comes to my mind besides the fact that that's perfectly okay if that's what they want, but it's also sort of like bragging that you still are in a covered wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a couple of more hands before I went off. Yes, my man. I just kind of had an epiphany. A long time ago, you were talking about how um, we should build our bodies with our minds and not build our minds with our bodies. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that's what the world is doing with cell phones. Like how you say we're evolving. That's our telepathy now because we build our mind with our <coughs> body, the physical world and what we have. But if we built our body with our minds and realize that we were vast and unlimited, like you were saying. That's a whole other thing in itself. But and what would that look like? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was, yeah. I was like, how could I even believe them? Like you were saying, how could you know what you're supposed to believe if you don't ever known it before? Like, what is vastness and unlimitedness? So, so, so what is, and that's the question you want to ask. What is vastness and what is unlimitedness? Exactly. And then the more you ask yourself and go into agreement with it, then perhaps you will finally know what it really is. Bingo. And then I wondered, so if you do connect to that, could you communicate with all things mm -hmm. that aren't connected to it still? And even if you're even communicating it, with that, are not, that are not connected to what? To the belief, to the agreement of vastness. Yes, yes, because you already are connected to them. And right. Yeah, we already are, we, we already are part of the one man. But we only see what, what we believe. believe. That's right. So that's why we think when our friends and relatives make the transition called death, that we are no longer in communication with them and they don't exist. Mm -hmm. The reason why we don't communicate with them is that we believe we can't communicate with them because they don't exist. So <laughs> does that mean we may not believe that we hear and see them, therefore we don't, but we do even though we don't believe it. Yes. And that may come in the form of what you think is your primal instinct saying, hey, go help that woman across the street. Which is what we were just told earlier, that you think a loving thought about someone then 10,000 miles away, somebody else feel good, but they don't realize that's being generated from the one mind. Exactly. Because we're all part of the one mind. It's, it's like if you think of a pot or a kettle and you're pouring water over it, one, just one little section of the kettle or one little section of the glass, it would lift all the water with rise. Mm -hmm. So us allowing these thoughts to come into our mind, they are also affecting all minds. So what we're doing right now is really bringing more love to all minds. And since everyone's behavior is coming from what they think, then we are affecting change at a level that really means something. When you change the way you think, your behavior is going to automatically change. So, so we are literally being the light of the world. That's what it means to be a light worker. It means you are here to be a physical representation of the thought of love in human form. You're the one that's supposed to make love not seem theoretical, make peace not seem theoretical, making being creative and loving not being how, how can I make it not be theoretical? by allowing myself to be a loving person that you are now around. And so now it's not theoretical that someone could be nice, caring, compassionate, responsible, not judging you. Why? Because I'm not doing it. So it's not theoretical if we're living it. And so it's important to give what you want to receive so that you can create it in your experience and stop waiting for someone else to do it first. Yeah. Okay, I understand what you just said. I understand what she just said. And I understand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But I guess my question is: Is do we have to be on the same wavelength, the same page? Because everybody's not going to like say, for example, like today I was talking to my dad, mm -hmm. and uh, I haven't lived around my dad in, in years, mm -hmm. but. He, I 
I thought he's changed, but that cat hasn't changed. He's kind of the mm -hmm. same, same individual. And that's great. That's wonderful. Actually, yeah, because uh, because the people I mean, who, the people who don't change, who, the people who do not appear to change. Mm -hmm. Those people are doing you a tremendous favor because they're teaching you that your happiness has to come from you changing your own mind right. and mm -hmm. not about anything that they're doing or not doing. Right. I mean, that's just that's just who he is. Well, that's who you perceive him to be. Who? Okay. Yeah, because, it's not who he is. Well, and no, I agree because it's like, <clears throat> see, all this stuff that you're talking about mm -hmm. is obviously somebody just walks through that door. It's going to be foreign to them because we were taught. The total opposite. Mm -hmm. All these things that people learn, mm -hmm. regardless if you were brought up in whatever denomination mm -hmm. of Christianity, mm -hmm. Judaism, Islam, whatever, mm -hmm. if you were taught these things, then mm -hmm. that's the lie. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is the truth, but somebody coming through that door is going to say, he's lying to me. Be mm -hmm. you know, because that's how they're going to perceive it. Mm -hmm. Because they're not going to say, oh, I'm innocent. I was told mm -hmm. I'm a sinner, mm -hmm. so I need mm -hmm. Jesus Christ to die for my sins to save me or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But, like you're talking about with the cell phones and the technology and all that. So, like she was saying, it's like perception. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, okay, because of somebody being able to still make a choice or a decision for what they want or what they don't want. So, regardless, even set that aside, you're still even, you're saying that we can still permeate beyond that, regardless of what that person they want to come on board or not. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Thank God. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Because now, and because there's going to be because yeah. that thought that thought is going to reach a person who is ready to begin their awakening process. Mm -hmm. It will okay. be. It can be a catalyst mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. someone who's ready. Mm -hmm. So it's not really about focusing in on the people who may not at a conscious level mm -hmm. appear to be ready, mm -hmm. as so so much so as we become catalytic agents for those pop for that popcorn is in the skillet that's ready to pop. Right. Right. All mm -hmm. the popcorn's gonna pop, mm -hmm. but it doesn't pop at the same time. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so it, so that's why the only responsibility that we have, according to this, is to accept this for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And every time that we worry about how anybody else is going to react or whether they're going to do it or not, that's a trick to keep us from achieving our goal even faster. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you can live at the level of your beliefs regardless of what anybody else appears to be doing. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that's just, if, if everybody in this room walk out here tonight and go, oh, there's a bunch of stuff, I can still walk out of the room and say to myself, I'm more than a, a body. Mm -hmm. My mind is vast and unlimited. Mm -hmm. And then create experiences that are that's in line with that, mm -hmm. which allows me to demonstrate that. And if you and if someone is seeing a demonstration of something, they are much more likely to begin to believe it's possible mm -hmm. and to join with that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's, there's no matter what I say, there's always another way to look at it. <laughs> okay, so I'm never speaking to y'all from the perspective of my point of view is the point of view. This it is just a point of view. So anybody can choose to agree or not agree or to see it another way. That's called the power of thought. As a matter of fact, you won't know the power of your thought until you start thinking whatever you want to think instead of thinking whatever you think somebody else wants you to think. Mm -hmm. That's how you get in touch with the power of your thought. I'm going to take a couple more minutes and we're going to go further. Yeah, get your, get your, get your hands first. Well, to cut David's point, I think that one of the things to recognize, and it goes very well with this, Choosing where we're going, what we're going to believe is that the word of truth never comes back void. So, if the word of truth never comes back void, if I say truth to you, even if in this moment you do not choose to perceive it and receive it, it is still sitting there in that collective knowledge that you've now received to foster and feed what comes in the future. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it will have the opportunity to be re-perceived again. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, mm -hmm. I had an amazing young man buy me dinner tonight. Thank you. And I had dinner with Linda and, and Nico, and we got on this fantastic conversation. I was telling him, 15 years ago, I was encouraged to do a, medita a style of meditation that just bored the heck out of me. And I was like, this is nuts. No. It's come back to me 15 years later. You know, I'm like, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. You know, like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because 15 years ago, where my mind was, mm -hmm. was far too active mm -hmm. to do what today I 
but I learned the thing 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so the word of truth doesn't never comes back void. It's the perception of time that we put on it, mm -hmm. right? As the, did it bring mm -hmm. today? Mm -hmm. You know, and so part of our perception is that limit of time that we put on its value. But you know, one of the, to, to add to what you're saying, which is so true, is that if you were to think of your thoughts or any thought that's being introduced to you as like this is a thought, this is a thought, this is a thought, this is a thought. Just use this for an example. This is a thought, and this is all these are all thoughts in your mind, right? Well, if I focus on this, then this is what I'm going to see, right? But that didn't that thought's still there. That thought's still notice that this, all the thoughts are still there. I'm just focusing on this thought right now. So when you don't remember a thought, it doesn't mean it's gone away or that it's not doing its thing. It just means you're not looking at it and focusing on it right now. Mm -hmm. You know. So like you said, then maybe 15 years later you'll find yourself going, oh. There's that thought, <laughs> and it really is one I should right. use right now. But it's been laying there for the last 15 years. Yeah. It's sometimes when I listen to my classes that I did 25 years ago or 30 years ago, I have tapes, and I go, I was saying the same damn thing 30 years ago <laughs> because it was the same book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was, I'm believe me, I'm a very different person than I was 30 years ago. I'm much more conservative. Mm. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Thank God that wherever you are, you draw people to you who need you exactly that way. And I love that, you know, that there that, that the people sent to you by the love in you. You can tell when the love in you brought those people to you because the way you are already is exactly what yeah. they need. Mm -hmm. So they're not coming to you to change you. They're coming to you and appreciating you. Mm -hmm. If love sends them to you, mm -hmm. they're not trying to change you. If fear sends them to you, mm -hmm. they're tweaking you all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so normal for us that we think it's normal now. Mm -hmm. We actually think the nature of a relationship is to constantly try to get the other person to do something to make you happy. <laughs> and that's not love, the nature of love at all. I'm whole, I'm complete, I am love, and I'm overflowing with love, and we're just overflowing on each other. <laughs> There's no lack in this experience whatsoever. I'm not trying to get something from you because I think something's missing in me. And I'm not trying to use you to hide how I feel about myself from me. Which is why, which is what fear-based people use relationships yeah. for. Love-based people, they just want to be the love. Mm -hmm. They just want to be it, cause they can't help it. That's what they are anyway. That's right. So you, you got you got a choice. Like it's not like the sun gets up and says, "Am I going to be the moon today?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like the sun is just going to be the sun. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying you are love, and you are loving and you're lovable, and you deserve love, mm -hmm. but you bought into some thoughts that told you otherwise, right. created experiences that validated that you didn't mm -hmm. deserve it, and now you believe it. And then you form relationships with other people who validate it. And then it becomes what we call a culture and a society. Mm -hmm. We say, I'm America. <laughs> you know, it's like it's funny when I first went over to uh, Europe it was always interesting that whenever people could get me off to the side they, they would always ask what the hell is going on with America <laughs> they, people overseas trip out at us we like trip them completely out you know so you know it's like well, anyway I don't even want to go there okay now that's just another part Yes. Real quick, I just wanted to thank you for what you've been saying because it's affirmed something in me that like in order for people to make an impact, they don't have to go and do something grand. You know, it could just be a thought. Mm -hmm. It could just be a smile. Mm -hmm. It could be something so small. It doesn't have to be like on a grand scale. And most times it's not, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's like if, to tell the truth, most, most things aren't done on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go on now, okay? Thanks for your interest, though, but I want to make sure that we keep yeah. moving forward in it. Uh, okay. This means that the body itself is constantly receiving input in the form of subtle energy vibration from everything and everyone around it. So you right now, through your body, 
are receiving subtle energy vibrations from everyone in this room. You are like a giant radio station. You are like a giant radio station that is picking up and transmitting signals constantly. I'm on channel 10, and then I pick up all the signals from other people on channel 10. But I am the whole radio. But I'm tuning into, the, some people tune into channel murder, channel violence, channel jealousy, channel bliss, channel poverty, channel six, sickness, channel health. And that's what we're doing. We're tuning into different levels of consciousness and experiencing experiences with other people who are in that same frequency. So if we are perceiving each other, we are on the same channel. So if, whatever you see in the world, that's the channel you're on. So you as much a part of what you see in the world as anybody else is. We are not separate from our own consciousness in that sense. So when I look at anything that's going on in the world, I say, wow, that's the part of my mind that's got a call for love that wants to do war. Oh, that's the part of my mind that's racist. Oh, that's the part of my mind that's loving. Oh, that's the part of my mind that thinks it's a woman. Oh, that's the part of my mind that thinks it's a man. Oh, that's the part of my mind that thinks it's white. Oh, that's the part of my mind that thinks it's Native American. It's like, I always say, it's, this is the part of me. This is the aspect of me. This is the thought. It's in my own consciousness that I'm looking at because if I own it, it doesn't attack me. Mm -hmm. When I separate myself from it, I experience what I think of as attack. I would be less susceptible to being attacked by ISIS, which is the latest illusion that everybody is afraid of, the terrorists in the Mideast that are supposed to be cutting off people's heads. That I'm much less likely to get my head cut off if I realize I have a part of my mind that's like ISIS. Because then I don't need to objectify it so it can show me that that's the part of your own mind. You have violent thoughts too. You have attack thoughts too. Just like they do. You're not any different. So by joining with them and saying they're not separate from me and then choosing for love, that's something that could give you what you would think of as safety. It's through joining, not separating. Mm. That's different, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. That's real different. Mm -hmm. You know, because we think that we, that we should say, I'm nothing like that. Well, that's why you're going to meet them on the way home. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> to show you, you, are you trying to tell me you never had a murderous thought, you never had an angry thought, you never thought if someone else didn't exist, your life would go better. If something was different, you wouldn't be happy. You've never been angry, you've never been irrational, you've never felt completely separate. Uh, of course you have it sometime in your life. That's the content's the same. The form appears to be different. You may not be beheading someone with a sword, but you might be giving them a finger in traffic. I'm not, I, I, my, my thoughts are not different from what I see. It's impossible that your thoughts be different from what you see because, it's, because you couldn't see it if you didn't have the thought of it. That's deep, man. So that's what makes this kind of spiritual metaphysical stuff, I think, kind of a challenge. Because in the very beginning, it's hard to accept because it's very difficult for people to accept that they're friggin' out of their minds mm -hmm. and insane mm -hmm. and afraid mm -hmm. and don't know how to love. Because so much of their feeling good about themselves is pretending that they're nicer than they are. <laughs> right? And so to get on the spiritual path, you have to be willing to get honest about your own ego and get off saying that you're the most loving thing around always being done wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be willing to go, boy, I have some lack of love. I'm afraid. I have anger in my mind. I have some attack thoughts. And now I need to do something about that and have another way of looking at it. So it's not like recognizing the shadow and then saying I'm going to stay in the dark. So this, that's just a stage of getting out of the dark, is recognizing you're in the friggin' dark, right? And then what happens when you're in a totally pitch black room? If you're in a totally pitch black room with no light in it, you start making up images in the dark. Mm -hmm. If you're there long enough, you start making up images in the dark. Mm -hmm. And we are making up images in the dark. That's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Sometimes I'd be afraid this gonna explode to little pieces of black flesh. All right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> my spiritual, that new spiritual name I got it just the other day was Black Salad. <laughs> That's a cool spiritual name, isn't it? Black Salad. <laughs> Since I chose to have a black body, thought I'd play with that and have fun with that. I know sometimes any kind of racial references make people who are racist feel ah. uncomfortable. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> so if you get all uncomfortable, it's, you might want to take a look at your racist attitude. Because <laughs> so you just feel as light about it as I do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So people get up. <laughs> they might have a few racial things they need to work to. But I think it's great becoming all these different colors mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. I think it makes it really, really interesting, don't you? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not boring, you know what I'm saying? I just wish we had some blue people and some that. green people, yeah. too. <laughs> you know, that's why I just love the Avatar. Like, give me a blue woman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Come with dressing and croutons? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was going to agree with with that thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I can create it. Uh, and, uh, watch it, you being happy. That's not, you know, don't do that. not good. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you are a radio station, uh, what's your ratings? <laughs> you know, are you, are you enjoying the frequency, the channel that you're on? Are you enjoying your radio station? Are you hearing songs and words and things that sound wonderful to you, that you love? You know, do you have a radio station that's playing your favorite hits all day? Yeah. <laughs> You know, so are you a person who loves uh, uh, symphony music and you're hearing Metallica? <laughs> so you might be on the, if your life sucks, you're on the wrong channel. And, and all you have to do is, you don't have to, you don't like a channel on radio, you don't go and attack all the people that's listening to it and go down, you know what I'm saying? You just change the channel. That's all we have to do, just change the channel. Wow. If you would like proof of this, especially if you would like proof of how powerful thought is, as thought expresses vibration through the body, simply create what you call in the world dowsing rods. That's two, take two pieces of metal, it could be two parts of a coat hanger, bend them so that you can gently hold one end and hold them in your hands about six inches from your body and then have a friend stand about 20 feet away from you. Have that friend think of thoughts of negativity such as I'm not worthy, I'm un not worthy of being loved, I have no energy, I'm not worth anything. And as they are doing that, walk toward them and see how close you get before your dowsing rods of metal begin to move around. Mm. Being back up, find, find just the edge where their energy field is influencing the rods. In other words, have you ever felt like someone was getting in your space? Mm -hmm. Well, that was you really beginning to feel them on the edge yeah. of your own auric field and energy. And if it's someone you really like, you want them in your space. Mm -hmm. If someone you don't think you like, you tend to be, oh, you're a little bit too close. Like some people can get close to you and you just go straight into discomfort. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people is like, oh, you can't get close enough. Mm -hmm. You know. Until you mess up. Okay, now, because <laughs> my love is conditional. <laughs> I want you to be clear about this. It's conditional. You know, it is. So, <laughs> now your body is like a divining rod. I won't even go there. And so is everybody else's. Therefore, those with confidence, those who love themselves, those who are not concerned with the good opinions of the world, who just go forward in the direction of what they love, are the ones that seem to gain the greatest support in the universe. I say it again. Those people who have confidence, who love themselves, and most of all, are not concerned about the good opinions of their mama, their daddy, their friends, their relatives, the society, but just go forward in the direction of what they love, those are the ones that seem to gain the greatest, greatest support in the universe. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when such a one walks into a bank to get a business loan, already knowing that this is a great idea and they're going to bring the fullness of their being to this great idea and that they could not possibly fail when they walk into the bank to get a business loan by just walking in the door, they are bringing an energy field that influences and touches the loan officer. Mm -hmm. 
those that walk in thinking, God, I wish I could get this business loan, but I just don't know. I don't have any experience in this. They're going to look at me like I'm a jerk. Hmm. And they walk in with a much reduced energy field. It's very weak. The quality of vibration of the thought is emanating out and touching the energy field of the loan officer. And if you were the loan officer, whom would you rather do business with? Therefore, when love leads the way, when love is the field of energy that you are abiding within everywhere you go, you are touching the universe in a way that is much more subtle than the conscious mind. And when you do that, the universe will respond to you because love responds to love like a flower that opens to the sunlight. You never have to seduce someone that loves you and you love. You never have to manipulate or seduce a person that make them want to be with you if it's the right energy. Mm. <laughs> How do I know that she's not the one? Well, she's telling you to get the hell out of her face. <laughs> 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 it might be a clue. <laughs> You've been chased once or twice the last two weeks. <laughs> she might not be your soulmate. <laughs> Isn't it funny that we think we have to guess if someone really appreciates us? It seems kind of ludicrous to me now, but I used to do that. I wonder if they like me. I wonder if they love me. If you're wondering... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm wondering. <laughs> Pretty much answers that question. I'm wondering. <laughs> but if I don't love myself, if I don't love myself, if I don't love myself, if I don't think I'm valuable, if I don't think I'm worthy, I'm going to have tremendous passion and desire for who rejects me and who is unavailable to me because that's the thought I've been going into agreement with and creating experiences of relationships that validate that to me. Mm -hmm. Woo! So the lousy relationship isn't coming from them, the lousy relationship is coming from me. Okay. Woo! Mm -mm -mm. It's almost like, you know, <laughs> asking everybody in this room to give me a mirror, and there's like 30 mirrors right here, and then I keep picking up the mirror and then expecting to see a different reflection when I look at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's this mirror's fault. <laughs> Let me get the next mirror. Oh, I just need another mirror. I'm seeing the same face. Oh, oh my God, I've seen that again. I need to get another one. And then just, that's what we do. We just go through one person to another person to another person to another person, hold up another mirror, another mirror, another mirror. Never dawning on me that if I want to see a different image in the mirror, I've got to have a different image I'm putting in the mirror. Mm. Oh, God, could it be this simple? Hmm. Now, I am not telling you anything you don't already know. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But you have not stopped to consider how profoundly important it is in the nature of your own life. You know that you respond to a happy person. You know that you respond to a kind person. You know that you respond to a loving person more than you would to a person who's being wicked in your perception. It's simple, common, friggin' sense, Raj. <laughs> you know that you love to be around beings that talk about unlimitedness. You know you love to be around beings that talk about great vision. Why? Because these people are reminding you that you too are a great visionary. That unlimitedness is the natural state of the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven simply means the reality of the love that we live in and exist in and that we are. The problem is, the problem is, the problem is that you have unwittingly, 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 unwittingly taught yourself to live in and from fear. You've taught yourself to live from fear. You've taught yourself to live from fear. You've taught yourself to live from fear. You've taught yourself to think negative thoughts. You've taught yourself to think negative thoughts. You've taught yourself to believe that the opinions of the world mean something. You've taught yourself to believe that the opinions of the world mean something. You have literally created a world in which people are negatively minded. You have literally created a world in which people do not want to support you. And you have literally created a world 
that you do not think you are worth anything. Yet, you are the one that is projecting that belief about yourself. You're the one that's projecting that belief about yourself. You're the one that's projecting that belief about yourself. You're the one that's projecting that belief about yourself. Mm. Wake up! Mm. <laughs> mm. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Stop letting your ego keep you in the same friggin' situation where you think you're not happy. It doesn't make sense to continue to go into agreement with the part of us that wants us to stay friggin' unconscious. And if you do, you're innocent. You're totally innocent. But why delay your happiness a moment longer by continually giving in to the ego that goes unconscious every time some friggin' truth is being said? Mm. Mm. Wow. Earl. <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you therefore want to attract beings who will support you and love you, decide to be a being who supports and loves yourself. Mm -hmm. Decide to open your arms wide, as we spoke of in the last lesson, to receive the love, the presence, and the pleasure of God's presence. What does that mean? It means think only loving thoughts. It means to learn to master forgiveness. It means dare to follow your heart. Dare to follow your heart. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Ibiza tomorrow because I'm daring to follow my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting up here right now doing what I do because I love to do it every day because I dare to follow my heart. There was nothing practical or rational about deciding to be a full-time Course in Miracles way a master yeah. teacher. <laughs> okay? But I dare to follow my heart. I dare to follow my heart. Mm -hmm. Not what society says, not, not believe that I have to spend the rest of my life going to jobs that I want to do and believing that I'm being taken care of by something other than the universe ultimately. You have to start to side with the idea that you are unlimited and you are vast and you deserve to be loved and to follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what's cool is you have as much time as you need to do it. So you might incarnate a few more times if you mm -hmm. like. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. But I don't even believe in reincarnation. Well, then you need to get on it. <laughs> then your butt should really be kicking it. Because <laughs> you think you don't even have a one shot at it. As if God is that unloving. <laughs> you know, we all start to raise superiorly, appearing to be unequal at the starting line. But we only have one race for all of us to run and get it. Now, what, now what kind of sense would that make of a mm. loving creator? Think, just think rationally, reasonably for a minute, and we would realize that this world is based on fear <laughs> and not love. And we're here to bring the love. Mm -hmm. We are the love. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is too. They just forgot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a, uh, I don't know if you saw this YouTube video. I guess this kid must be like a year and a half or something. Or two, I mean, he's still like, he's like in diapers or something. And, uh, and he and, and he was saying he was saying we've got to love each other. It's all inside of us. It's not outside of us. People think it's outside, but it's really inside of us. The love is inside of us. And there's some people that have just forgotten. And then I'm like, look at this kid, you know. And he's like, the kid couldn't have been over two or three years old. I'm serious. It's going like viral. And I'm like going. These kids are coming in right. knowing that right. we need to get our act together. You know what I'm saying? And instead of sometimes us contributing to that love, we are continuing to contribute to the ignorance. Mm -hmm. And so if you are, you're still innocent mm -hmm. and you're still loved. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that if love is the basis of everything, it doesn't really matter what <laughs> I'm doing, then I am going to be corrected in a healing, loving way. Because there's nothing but love is what's real. So, oh, I'm gonna finish this paragraph and we will be, be, we will be able to rush back into forgetfulness if we like. We can rush out of here and blame our mama again. <laughs> it's my girlfriend's fault. It's my daddy's fault. You know, <laughs> it's the government. Obama. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dare to follow your heart. Celebrate life. Yes. Do what brings you joy. Do what brings you joy. Walk as one confident in the light of Christ, which is the light of love. Dare to look out upon the world and say, my father, my creator has set the table before me and every being and blade of grass is here to support my enjoyment of God, which is love. Every being and blade of grass is here to support my enjoyment of love, my enjoyment of life. I like that. Every being and blade of grass is here to support my enjoyment of God. Would you acknowledge yourself for hearing this much Holy Spirit? My goodness. My word. Ah, thank you for that going away present. Those are, thank you for, I'm going to do the financial expression of appreciation. Thank you for sharing with me in my full-time ministry with this material. I, if you find it valuable and you feel in your heart moved to share, thank you so much for doing that. And if you don't feel moved, thank you so much for doing that. Um, those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, you just go to Earl Purdy, earlpurdy.com. And uh, I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions. And go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and it explains it and what it is and what it's about. And we can talk, whether you're international or national or local. Um, it's, it's time to wake up, and you can be supported in that. And I'm here to support you in that. And thank you for your support on every level, those of you that I'm always you know, hearing from and supporting and loving and appreciating. Thank you. Woo! All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we complete any, I like to always say this. One thing I heard tonight that I would love to remember is, and is anyone respond? Celebrate life. Celebrate life. My mind is vast and unlimited. Your mind is vast and unlimited. And to tell myself that so that I can see the experience. Of being vast and unlimited. <laughs> 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 yes, we'll channel joy. <laughs> yes, thank you. Anybody else? One thing I heard tonight that I would love to remember is love yourself. Love yourself. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. Nobody else, else is going to really do it till you do it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, in case you haven't noticed. Yes. You know. Uh, then you have so many people want to love you that you don't even know how to handle all of it. And then you have another challenge, which is increasing your capacity to receive. You, 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 you used to not receive, and so you got that down. And then all of a sudden, the stuff you start to want starts to happen, and then you get in touch with, whoa, wait a minute, I need to vastly expand my capacity to receive love and what I want. You know, and that's, that's a good problem to have. If you're gonna have one. Anybody else? One I need thing to wake heard. up. I need to wake up. I get to choose what I go into agreement with. I get to choose what I go into agreement with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not a victim of anybody else's thinking. As I withdraw my attention from my body, I can perfectly communicate with everyone and everything. As I draw my attention from the body, I can communicate more mm -hmm. with everyone and everything. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 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 Anybody else? And it, I am the learner. Yeah, I am the learner. The body is the learning device. It's my radio station. It's my communication medium. It's what gets me in touch with this plane. It actually is what allows me to perceive the physical plane. It's the body, because you know you don't need your physical eyes to see, right? Because you see things at night when you're in the bed with your eyes closed. <laughs> okay, so you know that you know images are not directly connected to the physical eyes. You can see much further with your mind mm -hmm. than you can with your physical eyes, mm -hmm. which is deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, if you knew if you knew you were just a mind and not not just a body, then it would, you could do something like this, you know, which is really cool. Have you ever wondered, like, how you heard about people being able, like, bilocate and be in different places at different times? And you know, there, there are a lot of gurus or masters, spiritual masters, that do all kinds of outrageous things. <laughs> okay, but if we, but it makes sense if you are the mind, right? Then, 
and this and, and this is the body, and it's actually inside <laughs> of your mind, then you could project a body anywhere. Because mm -hmm. it's all coming from within the same mind. So the once you begin to recognize your mind and not body, all things become possible. Mm -hmm. And you could be anywhere at any time. Because you already are everywhere. But you don't know it because you're identifying with your body. So don't try to figure that out and make it, you know, your head might come off. But just, just want to just wanna put a little, few little things out there. We don't want to. <laughs> so even if, you know, it's just great to come somewhere and hear something different. And then whether you understand or believe it or not, it still feels good to hear something different than what you hear all the time. So I'm glad for that. All right, so I'm going to do the prayer, the unlimited prayer for us before we go out. Okay? All right, so close your eyes if you don't mind. Take your attention off of these fine, luscious bodies all over this room so we can have some real communication. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen quite a few communication blocks in here just to <laughs> All right, you ready? Here we go. You are more than a body. Your mind is vast and unlimited. You are more than a body. Your mind is vast and unlimited. I am more than a body. My mind is vast and unlimited. I am more than a body. My mind is vast and unlimited. You are more than a body. Your mind is vast and unlimited. My 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 mind is vast and unlimited. And that is the deeper essence of your identity. That is the deeper essence of your existence. That is the deeper essence of your identity. That is the deeper essence of your identity and your existence. Your mind is vast. Your mind is unlimited. Your mind is vast. Your mind is unlimited. Your mind is vast. Your mind is unlimited. Your mind is vast. You are in perfect communication with all forms of life at all times. You are in perfect communication with all forms of life at all times. You are in perfect communication with all forms of life at all times. You are in perfect communication with all forms of life at all times. You need only withdraw your attention from your perception of your body just for an instant. Take your attention away from your body just for an instant. Take your attention away from your body just for an instant to access communication with anyone at any time. You need only withdraw your attention from your perception of your body to access communication with anyone at any time. So if there's anyone in your life that you would like to see a different relationship in your perception of more love, you would like to let go of agreements or something from the past, something that's making you feel selfish right now, making you feel agreements right now, all you have to do is 
withdraw your attention from your perception of you being a body just for an instant and tell yourself, my mind is vast and unlimited. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. You know the person that I'm talking about. You know the person that I'm talking about. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. You know the person that I'm talking about that when you think about them, you sometimes feel some discomfort or upset agreements, something from the past. You no longer want to be limited. You no longer want to be on that station anymore. You no longer want to be on that channel anymore. You don't, so you go, let peace extend from my mind to yours. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. My mind is vast and unlimited. Your mind is vast and unlimited. Mighty companions, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's such a blessing. And give it up to the other parts of yourself in here. I'm telling you, look at these cool people. And uh, may the course be with you. I'll see you the next time, Holy Spirit. See you after the 14th of October. And there's donuts available. Huh? Oh, donuts. Oh, both voodoo donuts. Oh, Lord. We're on the voodoo donut channel. Lord have mercy. Love you.